Hey, this is the second part of building with Convector. In this opportunity, I'm going to show you what models are and how you can use them to store and define some of the logic that your smart contract or chain code is going to have. In case you want to follow this example as I'm building it, you can type this command that it's going to create a new project called commercial and a new chain code that is going to be called agreement. So let's get into the folder that was just created and open the source code. By default, when you create a new project with Convector, this basic model is brought to you. So we need to get into the details of each one of these decorators so that you can use them in the best way for your project. So models from the basics are no more than classes. As you can see in here, it is exporting a new class called agreement. The main difference is that it is inheriting and extending convector model. In this case, we are adding by default all these helpers. These helpers are properties. These are called decorators in TypeScript, in case you didn't know. You can add them on top of your properties of this class and they will en enhance them. They will create some internals that you can use to avoid doing repeatable tasks. For example, in this case, we are saying the name is going to be required and it's going to be validated as a string. So usually what you do when you are building a smart contract is validating things. You have to see if all the rules, all the business rules met and you have to usually do things like type validation like dates or things like numbers so if you include these properties you just you don't, you don't have to remember everything and you don't have to validate things so let's imagine that you are building a smart contract and you have a new property in this case in the agreement you have something that that is going to be called the finish date and let's say that for some reason you forget to validate this manually. How you validate things usually is by hand. You know, you can do an if statement and see if this property is valid. But let's say that we forget to validate this as a required. So when this is being created and we don't validate that, we may create an issue for the business. For example, we forget, somebody forgets to create a transaction with a finish date, the smart contract closes, it turns into an actual business relationship, and all of that just because we forgot to validate something. Is we, if we include this decorator on top of this property, the smart contract is going to throw an error when a request is getting into the smart contract. So it won't allow anybody to create a new agreement without this property. In smart contracts, you really need to be aligned with the business. What models are doing are setting up these necessary properties. You need to remember that not all the data has to go to the blockchain, but all the data that it is important for a business relationship, like in this case an agreement, has to go in there. So you can create multiple models and you can use them in the same controller. And we will see some details about this later. But for now, let's create some extra properties for our model and let's use them in the controller in a basic setup. In this really basic setup, what we want to do is to create this validation uh, for an agreement. So we will set something like the title of the agreement and we are also at a description. Usually in a smart contract, you can automate things by putting properties but for this example, let's keep it simple and we will just make this like this is something that we agreed and this is going to be kept for the future in case somebody reads this and they can see what we agreed. So in this case, we already have a title and we have a description, but we may also need the signature of the people. So in this case, uh, the smart contract on this specific model is going to let you create a footprint, a fingerprint of the certificate that is sending the transaction. So we can do something like part party one and we can create another one like party two. In this case, let's say that when an agreement is created, 
it cannot change. So, for example, if I agree something with somebody else, we have to set everything from a start, from scratch, like the title, the description, who is the first party, who is the second party. So let's say we have to do this read-only as well. In Convector, a read-only property means that after it is set, you cannot change it. So let's set it like this, and we may also need something else. We need the explicit agreement or the explicit approval of each party. So we will add a Boolean property that it's going to be called agree party one and we will need another one that is going to be agree party two. In this case we will use this to see or to recreate or compile the status of the agreement. So the logic is the following. I have another person with whom I am setting up something. We want to store this relationship in a blockchain. So we said this is person A, this is person B, and then we each part has to send a new transaction saying that they are agreeing on what is defined on the smart contract. Since we will validate the fingerprint of the certificate, nobody can tamper this agreement. What typically comes next is for us to define this business rule. So I already explained the logic, but we need to code it. We need to make sure that as soon as both parties signed, whether it's uh, a yes or a no in this case, because we are using a Boolean, we, we need to define the logic and it is based on simple code. It is based on validations, if statements and so on. So let's move to the third part of this uh, video series to see how we can work with controllers.